So in this video we'll uh, talk about finite generation for abelian groups. Uh, so uh, let's let A be an abelian group. And uh, let's suppose we've got some uh, elements. Uh, L is kind of A1 up to AR. A list of elements of A. Okay, so then we can consider their span. Um, span over Z of L, that's the set of things that will form M1A1 up to MRAR. Um, where these uh, coefficients MI, they're all supposed to be integers. <coughs> um, uh, so this is a uh, easily seen to be a subgroup. And uh, we say uh, um, uh, A is finitely generated uh, if there is a, a list L as above, uh, where the span of the list uh, is the whole whole group. <coughs> okay, so uh, this doesn't happen automatically. Um, <coughs> So, uh, uh, so let, let's consider uh, the uh, uh, polynomial ring Zx. Uh, so this is the uh, 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 polynomials uh, f of x is like uh, c naught plus c one x to c r x to the r. Um, with uh, integer coefficients. <coughs> yeah. um, so I want to claim uh, this is not finitely generated. Which I'll typically just write as FG. Okay. So this is not a finitely generated abelian group. Uh, uh, if uh, Uh, so, uh, suppose we've got a list uh, in fx, then uh, um, put uh, d, say, as uh, um, the maximum of the degree of f1, degree of f2, maximum of all the degrees, uh, plus 1, let's say. <coughs> um, okay, so uh, then... <coughs> um, Okay, let's just say we let's put it without without the plus one. Then uh, um, uh, the degree it's, uh, it's easy to see the degree of m1 f1 plus m2 f2 up to mr fr. Uh, that's also going to be less than or equal to d. Um, <clears throat> and therefore, if you look at x to the d plus one, well then that's not in uh, the span over z of our list L. Okay. Um, so the span of L uh, can't be equal to the whole uh, whole group. Uh, <coughs> um, so that, that's a proof that the uh, Zx is, is not a finely generated group. We'll do we'll do one other example. Uh, I claim that uh, Q is not finely generated. Okay, okay. Q, of course, that's a uh, rational. So that's the a group under uh, uh, group under addition as well. Um, um, so let uh, Q1 up to QR be a, a list in Q. Um, uh, so BI can be written as AI over BI. Oh, sorry, QI can be written as AI over BI. Um, 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 uh, and write as AI over BI with uh, um, <coughs> uh, BI, uh, AI and BI integers and BI strictly positive. Um, okay, and so let's put B just be the product of these uh, denominators. 
so that, so it's easy now to see that uh, BQI is an integer. Right, because uh, BI appears as a factor in B, so when you multiply QI by B, then that, that cancels out. Uh, it's just, uh, um, you just get an integer. Um, uh, and so, if we take a thing like this, M1Q1 up to MRQR, and we multiply it by B, uh, then uh, you know, then that will be in Z. Uh, and so if I take something like 1 over 2B, you see that that can't be in the span. Yeah, yeah, I mean if, it, you know, <coughs> uh, if this was in the span, then you would multiply it by B and you get an integer. But if you multiply this by B, obviously you get a half, which is not an integer. Um, so we see that the span is not equal to Q. Okay, so, uh, um, yeah, so Q can't be written as the span of some finite list either. <coughs> okay, so, so what, what, uh, you know, which things are finitely generated? Well, uh, um, uh, if you just look at z to the n, well, that's uh, pretty easy to see that this is the span of your standard basis vectors. E k means the uh, basis vector with a, a k in the uh, in, with a one in the kth slot. Okay, so that's uh, <coughs> um, so z to the n is finitely generated. Okay. <coughs> um, <coughs> um, and if you look at Z mod D, uh, well that's uh, okay we only need one generator here, just a list of length one. Everything in Z mod D is just a multiple of this guy, so uh, um, so you just need that. Uh, so uh, um, so we find that Z mod D is finitely generated. Um, and now, yeah, if uh, <coughs> I mean if A is say the span of A1 up to AN, and B is the span of B1 up to BM then uh, it's pretty easy to see that A plus B is the span of the lists, these two lists combined in the obvious way. So you've got A1 comma 0 up to An comma 0. Those are all elements of this uh, direct sum. Uh, and then also 0 B1 up to 0 Bm. Okay, <coughs> um, so it's kind of easy to see. We've got uh, any element, you know, element of A plus B is an element of A combined with an element of B. The first element you express as a linear combination of the AIs, the second one expresses a linear combination of BIs. Um, you see that this list span is going to span A plus B. Uh, so if A and B are finitely generated, then so is A plus B. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, so if we do something like z to the n and then plus z mod d1 plus up to z mod dr so if anything like that's going to be finitely generated you know we said that the z to the n is finitely generated each of these individual terms is finitely generated we said there so uh, you've got a finite generating list uh, for a sum like that <coughs> um, and uh, <coughs> so there's a couple of a couple of theorems that I'm not going to prove in this course, but uh, kind of standard theorems from uh, abstract algebra, and I'll just record for the time being. Um, uh, so, firstly, if A is finitely generated and B is a subgroup of A. Then B is finitely generated. Okay. Subgroups are finally generated, groups are finally generated. 
And uh, secondly, if A is finitely generated, then A uh, is isomorphic to, say, Z to the N plus Z mod P1 to the M1. Um, yeah, so some primes uh, P1 up to PR and integers M1 up to MR which are going to be strictly positive um, uh, and, uh, and this uh, representation is unique up to order okay so <coughs> uh, <coughs> um, yeah so you got uh, <coughs> um, Um, yeah, so I mean, if you've got a, you, if your group's written like this, well, you know, you could you could write the write the prime powers in a different order from the what, what you first thought of, um, and it would still be essentially the same group uh, up to isomorphism, but but that's the only kind of ambiguity that you get. Um, so as an example of that. Um, Let's say uh, let's have uh, groups of order 100, uh, 144. Okay, so 144 is uh, 12 squared, uh, which is two to the fourth times three squared. Um, uh, let's uh, try and classify groups like that. Um, uh, okay, so uh, uh, so this must be like z to the n plus. Z mod P1 to the uh, M1 uh, um, but uh, uh, group uh, yeah, if, if, I, if N was strictly positive that would be an infinite group um, uh, so N has to be zero okay so uh, uh, um, and then, uh, yeah, let's say groups A. Um, so, so you've got two to the fourth times three squared. So that we're assuming is the uh, order of our group A, uh, and that's got to be uh, P1 to the M1 times. Yeah, it's got to be the product of the orders of these factors. So, uh, so each PI has got to be uh, two or three. Right? Uh, <coughs> um, so the possibilities are kind of a, um, uh, the kind of a, yeah, the sort of order three squared part must be uh, could be z mod three squared, z mod nine, or z mod three plus z mod three. Okay. And remember, as we explained previously, these are definitely different. You know, this, this group here has a bunch of elements of order 9, whereas every element here, uh, apart from the identity, has order 3. Uh, so these are definitely different groups. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the three primary groups could be either of these possibilities. Uh, and then the order 2 to the fourth part, well, there's various possibilities. It could be Z mod 2 to the fourth, Z mod 16. Uh, or you could have uh, Z mod 8 plus Z mod 2. Uh, or you could have Z mod 4 plus Z mod 4. Or you could have Z mod 4 plus Z mod 2 plus Z mod 2. Or you could have Z mod 2 four times. Uh, so, <coughs> um, so it's kind of part of the theorem that all these groups are, are not isomorphic, and none of these groups are isomorphic to each other. And you know, so you could uh, <coughs> um, yeah, you could prove that directly if you wanted. I mean, here this is the this is the only group in this list that has any elements of order sixteen. 
Um, this is the only group that has elements of order 8, but no elements of order 16. Um, this one and this one, they're a little bit harder to tell apart because, you know, these, are, um, these both have no elements of order 8 or 16, but they do have elements of order 4. So this one has only elements of order 2. So you just have to distinguish between these, uh, this one and this one, which you could do by sort of asking how many elements of order 2 there are, for example. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so, uh, um, so here we've got uh, two possibilities. And here we've got five. Uh, therefore, there's uh, yeah, ten abelian groups. Award 144 up to isomorphism. And so you've got, uh, you've got Z mod 16. Oh, uh, so Z, Z mod 9, direct sum Z mod 16. Z mod 9, uh, direct sum uh, Z mod 8. Z mod 2, and then some more, and then some more. Uh, these ones Z mod 3 plus Z mod 3 plus Z mod 16, and then at the end you get Z mod 3 plus Z mod 3 <coughs> um, <coughs> uh, plus Z mod 2 four times. So these are all the possible abelian groups for 144. Um, <clears throat> uh, and notice that this one, for example, this one is isomorphic to Z mod 144 by the Chinese remainder theorem. Uh, <coughs> um, <coughs> uh, this one, for example, we could write as, uh, again, Z mod 72, plus Z mod 2. Okay, I mean, using the Chinese remainder theorem, we can rewrite these things in, in various different ways. Uh, but uh, if we write it with prime power orders, which is kind of the canonical thing to do, uh, then, uh, uh, then then we get this, uh, this list that we wrote out here. Let's also have a quick example of the uh, the other theorem we said. Um, uh, a subgroup of a finitely generated group is uh, finitely generated. Um, yeah. Uh, um, uh, <coughs> so. Uh, um, Yeah, so we can have A is Z cubed, say, uh, and B is the set of uh, things uh, X, Y, Z in Z cubed, uh, such that X plus Y plus Z, uh, <coughs> um, say, is uh, 0 mod 2. Okay, so that's a, a subgroup of a finally generated abelian group. Uh, <coughs> yeah, so... Uh, um, uh, so it's all to be finally generated. Uh, so let's uh, just uh, um, try and find some finite generators for this subgroup. Um, uh, so let's put uh, uh, u is 1, 0, minus 1, v is 0, 1, minus 1, w is 0, 0, 2. Okay. Um, <coughs> so uh, <coughs> Um, okay. yeah. So here, if we look at uh, the sum of the three entries, here you obviously you get zero, so that's uh, and zero is zero mod two, so that's in B. Uh, and uh, this uh, <coughs> um, <coughs> V, this uh, yeah, here the sum of the three entries is again is zero, so that's in B. And for W, the sum of the three entries is two, which is zero mod two, so that's in B. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's suppose uh, X. Y Z um, <coughs> uh, is in B, so uh, X plus Y plus Z is two T say. Um, <coughs> so then, uh, and if we look at X U plus Y V, 
Okay, so that's x, y, minus x, minus y. <coughs> um, okay, so that's... Uh, um, but, uh, okay, so here you've got uh, x plus y is, z mi uh, uh, is going to be 2t minus z. Uh, so that's x, y, uh, <coughs> yeah, and then so you've got z minus 2t here, if you like. Uh, uh, okay, so if we do, uh, um, <coughs> yeah, and now if I, if, so if I add on tw, uh, xu plus yv uh, plus tw, you then find that's uh, x, y, z. Okay, um, so uh, so that's in this. So we find that this x y z that's in the span of uh, u v w. Um, okay. So that's just an example of showing that a, uh, a particular subgroup of a finitely generated abelian group is indeed finitely generated.